All right, I'm here with another SQL video. In today's video, I am going to talk about a peculiar scenario. So this is how the story goes. I was troubleshooting a client's server, remotely of course, and we observed a lot of blocking issues on the monitoring dashboard. The numbers were getting into thousands and just not blocking issues, we were seeing a lot of deadlocks also happening. Now, locking and blocking is quite common in OLTP applications, but two things, two factors to it. Number one, if the blocking issues are way beyond your normal baseline, uh, way above the average, then that is a cause of concern. And issue number two, if the locking duration, the so-called block duration is way high, then that definitely needs investigation. Whenever you see a performance issue like this, there are three things to it. First, you are identifying the issue. Second, you are troubleshooting it, which is the diagnostics part of things. And third, you are, of course, fixing it. I'm skipping the first part and the second part, which is the identification and diagnostic, because that will take the video to another tangent. But I'm definitely going to discuss the root cause of the problem and how we fixed it. So you are wanting to know the root cause of the problem, why there were so many blocks and why there were so many deadlocks. The issue was indexes. Yes, it was due to lack of right indexes, or maybe I can say we fixed it by creating some indexes. Now, the moment we talk about indexes here with a blocking scenario, you would wonder what has indexes to do with concurrency? Aren't indexes supposed to speed up query performance? You're absolutely right. Indexes are supposed to speed up query performance. They are objects and they help, uh, they're great searching objects, which they help the engine get to the data faster, so-called searching mechanism. So yes, they help in speed up, speeding up queries. But in this particular case, it was due to the lack of indexes, the right indexes, if I may say so, uh, they were blocking issues happening. And I will get to the demo um, very quickly in a moment. There's one more thing. When we talk about these blocking scenarios, they're perceived as performance issues by business users. Now, take a step back and just forget for a moment that you are a SQL Server professional. Uh, put yourself into the shoes of a business user. All that business user cares about is they're running a report, they click on a button, and in a reasonable amount of time, they want the output back on their screen. Now, what's happening behind the scenes uh, with the application layer, the network layer, uh, the database, the engine, indexes, locking architecture, it's none of their concern. They probably do not know anything about it. All that they care is why is the output not coming? So if their request, if their transaction is being blocked and they're waiting, that is a performance issue. And this is exactly what was happening in this particular case which I'm going to show to you right now. So what I did, we learned whatever we learned there and I created a, like, like I always do, which is created a academic, academic prototype and using adventure works and SQL server, let's get down straight into action and see this yourself, how indexes were created to avoid blocking. That's the moot point. Let's get started. So I'm going to use adventure works 2016 here. There is a table called person.address. I'm going to create a copy of it. So I'm going to start from scratch. And the name of this table is address copy. That's the copy. And right now, as you know, it is a heap because we just created this. Let's look at the structure of the table. Let's get five records out. So we have the address ID and then we have address line one. There are a couple of other columns, but we are going to play with address ID and address line one. First things first, uh, because I'm just trying to uh, get closer to the kind of scenario we uh, faced and the problem that we solved. So I'm just trying to uh, create, uh, uh, replicate the scenario as close as possible. So there was a clustered index on that table as well. So I'm going to create a clustered index here, which is, and of course, uh, a primary key on address ID. Address ID seems to be the perfect column here to do that. Let's do, let's go and do this. Now, what do we have? We have a table address copy with a primary key on address ID and primary key by default creates the clustered index. Now, before I run an update statement, something like this, let's jump over to this window first and see that 
I am running a select statement from this table address copy, the one that we just created. And look at the where clause. We say where address line one is equal to nine eight three three something something something. Okay, and if you go and run this, it runs absolutely perfect. Let's just go and see. We are executing this and we are instantly getting the output this is what business users want isn't it you are just get you they're just firing a select statement via a report and they're getting the output now note this address here the one that you know i'm filtering on so the predicate says 9833 right now let's jump back to the other window the other user and let's say this is another user and this user is trying to update this table address copy and is setting the line uh, address line one to Bangalore, India, whatever. But look at the where clause where address line one is 970 Napa something. Now, what will happen behind the scenes? This transaction is supposed to hold or supposed to acquire an exclusive lock on this particular row of right because this is an update statement an update statement will require an exclusive lock an X lock and remember exclusive locks are not compatible with any other type of lock now in the database world this particular transaction will hold an exclusive lock on this particular row whatever that number is and the other user who wants to fire a select statement will require a shared lock every select statement in the default isolation level which is read committed they need a shared lock on this particular row now the moot point here is both these rows are different 9833 is a different row and this one 91970 is a different row now let's go and run this um, uh, transaction and note that we are beginning the transaction but we are not committing it and we are not even rolling it back so neither roll back nor commit which means this is an in-flight transaction three rows were affected okay which means uh, there were three records that had this address okay and this is an in-flight transaction now let's jump back to this particular query and let's go and execute this now what you're going to see is this particular user or this particular transaction whatever or this particular workload is being blocked no output coming business user is waiting and this is what is perceived as a performance problem now you know if this blocking scenario was just like a few milliseconds probably it would not show up in the monitoring dashboard uh, but if this goes on for a few seconds and minutes then this is definitely an alert in the monitoring dashboard and we were like seeing this hundreds and thousands of times happening every now and then okay so let's go and stop this let's come back here and in a new window I did this this is what I, I was exactly trying to show you that the select wasn't uh, working now let's go and roll back okay execute this now I already told you that this is going to be about indexes right so this problem gets elevated right it gets fixed if you create a non clustered index on address line one so obviously when I'm going to create this index and you will see that this works fine but let before I do that let me just go go into the technicalities as to what happens behind the scene so if you jump over to the select statement and uh, the and let's turn on the actual execution plan let's go and execute this and jump over to the execution plan tab you will see that SQL Server is deploying a clustered index scan for this select statement. There is no index. You know that this address copy was is a table that we just created. So there's only a clustered index on it. There are, there are no non-clustered indexes. So whatever you put in your where clause, it's always going to do a clustered index scan. A clustered index scan here means that you're touching every row in the leaf level right so you have all your data pages at the leaf level and whenever you have a clustered index scan to satisfy this where clause this predicate this criteria you have to touch every row and figure out if that is a matching row or not because it's a scan so it's going to do from the first record to the last record fair enough right now there's no other transaction running so when you click on execute it goes and touches every record gets access to the record and fetches the data out right so this is like this transaction in read committed isolation is locate the record acquire a shared lock 
read the data, release the lock. That happens for every row and <clears throat> goes fine because there is no other blocking transaction. But the moment you run your update statement, this begin trend, which is what we did, let's do that once more. The moment you execute this now, and this is <clears throat> session ID 55. The moment you do this, and this is an in-flight transaction, no rollback, no commit, let's go and take a deeper look into the locking architecture. What locks are being taken? So I'm skipping the indexes part. We're going to come back to that in a moment. Session ID 55, if I go and execute this, you will see that, remember there were three matching records, if you recollect that, you can see that there are three records here, session ID 55. So let's do this from here. Okay. Okay. XXX in grand. Okay. There you go. So you can see that key locks, right? That's the mode of the lock. Key locks were acquired. They were granted. And this is exclusive lock. That's the, sorry. This is the resource type. Sorry there. Key uh, locks were taken and this is exclusive mode. So they were granted. Now, when session ID 65, this select statement is session ID 65. Have a look there. Now, if we go and execute this, I told you what's happening behind the scene, right? Those three locks are, uh, those three rows are logged now. Exclusive locks are taken. This session ID, session ID 65, does not really want to read those records, right? Because it wants access to 9833 something. But it's a clustered index scan. So it has to touch every row to figure out if that's a matching row or not. So it has to even go and access those three records. That is where the problem is. So it's going to go like start from the first row and go all the way to the last row. And as it comes to this particular page, uh, where these three rows are there, it gets so called stuck up, right? It's waiting and let's go and figure this out. And of course, this is an infinite wait now, right? Because there's no lock timeout set. So this is session ID 65. Let's go and look at uh, 65. So you have, you've seen what's, what's happening in 55. Let's go and look into 65. In 65, you can see, okay, so this is going to be a page lock. So uh, depending on the number of rows and um, number of uh, pages, SQL Server is going to decide what kind of lock it wants to take. So the resource type here is page. It's not a key lock. It's a page lock and the request mode is shared because it wants to read and it's being asked to wait and it is waiting that is where the whole problem is so let's go and uh, roll back and see how indexes are going to fix it now so let's go and roll back and of course the moment you roll back select statement goes through so we are going to create an index on address line one let's do that and now Let's run the begin trans statement again. Now, when you run the begin trans statement, and of course, I'm going to show you the lock uh, DMV once more. Again, three rows are affected. Those three rows that we were trying to update, and this is an in-flight transaction. Exactly the same scenario, but now you have the indexes in place. Let's go back. Now comes the crux, right? Climax. So if you go and execute this, this should not wait. It does not wait. So here you go through indexes have solved this problem. This is like creating indexes to avoid a blocking scenario. Now what happens behind the scene? Let's go and look into the execution plan. And now you will see that there are, there's no clustered index scan. Instead, there is an index seek on the index that we just created. Now the idea is very simple because this select statement wanted access on this row, not those three rows that were, are blocked by the other transaction. So there is a non-clustered index. So it goes and looks up in the non-clustered index. A seek happens only on those three matching records. And then we have a lookup, which is this key lookup, also called as the bookmark lookup, to navigate and extract the record from the base table. Because we say select star, we want all the other columns. All the columns are not present in the index that we created, only address line one is created. So via address line one and the predicate, we figure out the rows from the non-clustered index, then we do a lookup on exactly those three records. That's all. So we don't need to touch every record in the base table. And there's no scan from first row to the last row, etc. And that helps in avoiding blocking scenario. 
okay so uh, while all this is happening let's finally take a look at session id 55 and now you will see 55 is locking uh, a few more things because now the non clustered index also comes into action so you are locking something at root level uh, root page intermediate page the leaf pages of the index structure and then you are placing exclusive locks on the base table as well but they're all key 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 exactly those objects and um, for 65 i really just can't show you anything because the statement goes through right so it's like locate the record uh, read it uh, locate the record acquire the lock read the data release the lock right so if you do a thing on 65 right now it won't just say anything it's just a shared lock on the database because the statement is going through okay so i hope you get the scenario just a quick recap and the takeaways in this particular scenario we have created indexes to avoid blockings and of course this can also lead to deadlocks right a very simple scenario because there was only one table involved here one resource but think about let's say another resource was involved and they're interchangeable interchangeably wanting to access each other's data it could lead to deadlocks also which is exactly what was happening at our client's server right so indexes in this particular scenario to be honest, we're not created to just kind of speed up the predicate, the search or the query performance, but for uh, avoiding blocking scenarios, which is good, which is fair enough. End of the day, you are solving a performance issue. Yeah, there are caveats to this. Uh, you just can't go and blindly create a lot of indexes. Every time there is a blocking scenario, you just can't create indexes like that. You got to review a lot of other things, which we did. We have to see how many non-clustered indexes already exist on the table. Is there an existing index, uh, which is a combination of address line one or something? Maybe address line one is not the first column, or it may be the second or third col column in a multi-column index. A lot of different things have to be considered, but I hope you get the idea, you get the concept, what was happening. Hope you learned something new. Do subscribe, share this with your colleagues. Happy SQL. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there. Video courses, master classes, lab kits, eBooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter at the rate SQL Maestros and myself A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.